Alright, welcome everybody back again with the LDL Season 7 Week 10 Power Rankings. I am the Lazy Ghost. I will be flying solo this week as we had our other commentator drop out for this week. So you've stuck with me for this week. So hopefully this one will be pretty quick. I apologize in advance if it sounds like I'm pinching my nose throughout the duration of this video. I'm getting over being sick. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into week 10. This was a pretty crazy week in the grand scheme of things. We're getting pretty close to playoffs as well. So as you can see, the standings on the right-hand side, you can see how those are pretty there's pretty good symmetry amongst the Alola Conference and Kanto Conference for how the records are working out. And everybody is trying their best to try to make the final push into playoffs, as you know. The top four from each conference will be able to get into playoffs, and it is based off head-to-head -head first. So a lot of these, a lot of these scenarios are working their way out, and this should be a pretty, pretty crazy finish. But with the week 10 matches, we had Mark versus Shea, with Shea coming out victorious. Jesse versus Trig, with Trig getting a big victory there. Uh, Chris versus myself, uh, and I was able to come out victorious. Steven versus Anthony. Steven was able to just really take control of that game. Randward versus Brennan in what was a fantastic battle, and Brennan was able to clutch that one out. Uh, Brandon versus Alejandro, and Brandon was able to secure the victory there. Uh, DJ versus Jordan, DJ coming out victorious, and Matt versus Carlos, where Matt was able to pick up a big victory in the Alola Conference. So we will go ahead and start with the 16 through 9 teams and at the bottom unfortunately number 16 the Clearfield Charmander dropping a few spots to the 16 spot and I, I guarantee it's not for lack of trying he is he has really gotten into the groove with figuring out how the hyper offense works but because he's using such hyper offense doesn't really have the the safe switches and things like a wall core any tiny mistake early on in the game or a crit or something like that is going to be able to really just put a damper on what he can do week in and week out. Uh, unfortunately, this week he did fall to DJ. DJ had really good prep, prep in that game, I felt like, and it was a battle that could have gone either way. Ultimately, DJ was able to position his Crooked Isle and Drudagon in positions where they could uh, be victorious. It was really cool to see the Tailwind tech uh, switching into Drudagon on a Mega Gardevoir and then knocking it out with the Tailwind boost and Iron Head. So great battle for both trainers. It was a really quick battle as well because both trainers brought a lot of offense. Uh, but no doubt about it, Jordan has a uh, bright future ahead of him. He's got a battle with Matt next week, and that should be pretty good because Jordan has a really good matchup versus Matt. But uh, with that said, we've got the number 15 team, the Lakewood Trevenant coming in at number 15, dropping a few slots. Uh, but Alejandro is always bringing the heat. Uh, he drops a few spots because he loses to Brandon. And really, this was a commanding victory by Brandon where he just had control of the game from start to finish. Um, I felt like Venusaur needed to be a bigger or play a bigger impact in that game because it just pretty much walled all the big threats from, from Brandon's team, bar the Jirachi. Uh, but Brandon was able to put his... Pokemon in a really good position in that game, uh, most notably the Zygarde 50, just really kind of steamrolled through Alejandro's team and uh, ultimately got him the victory. And Primarina, as to be expected, Primarina is putting on a ton of pressure with things like the Choice Specs item, and that Primarina Zygarde combo is a force to be reckoned with. And definitely something that most of the people in the league are very scared about uh, but beard for the rest of the season he's committed to still putting everything he can into getting out some of, or squeaking out some of those victories and possibly ruining other people's playoffs hopes as he uh, looks to put a final stamp on this season so uh, at the number 14 spot we have a big riser here We've got the Kansas City Kingler and coach Trigg and man this was a fun battle to watch because Trig excellently played his Clefable in this game to get him a victory. He's able to set up the stored powers, or no, he's able to set up the uh, cosmic powers. I got that wrong. The cosmic powers, so he could get a stored power boost, but he was able to 
just put the Clefable in a position where it was just going to win the game. Uh, with Jesse's team, he does not have a poison type on his team, so the lack of poison stab makes Clefable a really huge threat. And when you combine the fact that his steel type answer is a fair thorn that relies on a gyro ball uh, versus slow clef, uh, clef, Clefable pretty much was going to be able to just break through Jesse's team if he did not bring a good answer to it. And that's exactly what happened. Clefable able to pick up the game. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's really awesome to see Trig use some of those mons like the Clefable late in the season and really get a lot out of it. I feel like Clefable was something that every coach, no matter when they play Trig, is going to have to account for. And he can't account for every single Clefable set. So uh, really great battle there for Trig, bumping his way up a couple positions in the power rankings. Uh, at number 13, we've got the Midwest Mill Tank, who faced off versus myself this week, and it was a is a really good battle, really fun battle. The the Heliolisk Scarf Heliolisk with Solar Power, you would think it's rocking a choice specs based on the damage that it does. Solar Power, such a threatening ability paired with all the Sun options that Chris has. Um, ultimately, I have the most broken Mon in draft format, which is Curum, which was able to kind of guide me to a victory in that game. And for me, I just made sure that I was able to position the electric terrain so that Lilligant couldn't freely sleep powder things in the sun. And that's really what the game came down to. Uh, there were some points of the battle, if you get a chance to watch it, where I had to make some pretty aggressive plays, like staying in uh, against a Heliolisk, knowing it's Scarf, and now it's fed my Scarf Curum, and hoping it goes for Volt Switch, uh, because he was able to get rocks up in that game, and eliminate my Hitmonchan early, to where I could not remove the rocks. So, overall, a really great battle. Chris is doing quite a bit of travel, so to see him be able to still keep up some solid prep work and in, in light of the fact that he has to fly around the country pretty much every week for the rest of the season is pretty impressive and that's why we got him here at the 13 spot and now uh, we'll hop over to the 12 spot we got the Lake Erie Gyarados and the third member of the Ohio trio and Shay's the one who gets to uh, take bragging rights, basically, and say that he's the top-rated Ohio player in these power rankings. And so Shay getting a, a big jump up this week because he was able to just, you know, I, I, I'm really sorry about this, Mark. I love you. Uh, but he just kind of molly uh Mark this week, and that was due to superior play from Ditto. Uh, really, the, the, the prep work and the headache that it takes to to really counter a ditto takes a lot of effort because you got to make sure that one you, you bring the right Pokemon to beat Shay's team but you also have to make sure that the Pokemon you bring don't lose to themselves and so for a team like Mark that relies on setting up a Gyarados that rely on um, setting up a Halucha that's really hard to do when you can just bring in Scarf Ditto to revenge kill those. So the Ditto was really well played. Um, I thought Rhyperior was kind of a sleeper in this matchup. If it was able to maneuver around Grassy Terrain Bulu and the Gyarados, uh, Rhyperior was a very big threat to Mark's team who is pretty weak to rocks. So uh, Rhyperior nabbed three kills, Ditto nabbed another two. And overall, I think that Shea just really played to his win cons uh, extremely well in this game, and that's why he got the bump up to the number 12 spot. And coming in at number 11, we've got the Chelsea Felstingers and Coach DJ. Man, this was a really fun battle to watch DJ versus Jordan. DJ was able to come out on top, and he had some fantastic tech. Uh, I mentioned one of them earlier, being able to tailwind. Uh, with the Suicune and then switch in Dredagon to be able to knock things out like a Mega Gardevoir. Dredagon is a sleeper in Draft League just because it has amazing coverage options. It gets so many physical coverage options outside of Dragon moves and it's just really tough to deal with. Things like Gunk Shot, things like Iron Head, things like the Elemental Punches, things like Glare. Uh, I think DJ has really come into his element and if you notice, there's a certain part of the season where he starts picking up a lot of victories, and that's because he's, he's using Dredagon a bunch, and I think Dredagon definitely something not to be sleep, slept on. Uh, Suicune definitely proving to be one of a uh, really one of the really strong pickups this season, and 
you, you really got to go out of your way to prep for the Blacephalon too, and I think that can hurt some of the uh, balance that you're going to face in other teams. And so even though he did not bring the Blacephalon versus Jordan, you, you guarantee he had, to, he had to prep for it, and that's something that gives DJ an advantage every single week, things that are strong as a Blacephalon, which, to be honest, just doesn't have many switches. So that is why we've got the Chelsea Felsingers here at number 11. And at number 10, uh, for the number 10 and number 9 spots, we're getting to the fringe of the playoffs. And actually, if the season were to end today, Brandon would be in the playoffs. But he is sitting at the number 10 spot here currently. Uh, he's had a pretty up and down season. But week 10, he was able to get a big victory versus the Lakewood Trevidence and Coach Alejandro. Um, I mentioned that a little bit when talking about Alejandro's position in the power rankings. He did position his Zygarde 50 and Primarina really, really well in this game. I think the pressure that the, that combo puts on on a, an opposing team, there's there's not too many Pokemon that just can switch into Primarina. And if you don't have a good Zygarde switch, then it, it, just, it could be GG for you early in the game. Zygarde can break through the team and allow for things like Jirachi to paraflinch its way to a win. And it can break through the team and allow for Primarina to just specs special attack its way through a team. And uh, I think they have the 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 addition of Mega Sableye early on in the season has really helped out Brandon because he doesn't have to worry as much about hazards, and he can just have a safe switch in to bounce hazards back on the opposing side of the field so that he can protect things like his Galvantula and protect things like. Uh, just some of the Pokemon that are weak to to rocks on his team. So, uh, Brandon, again, if the season ends today, he is in the playoffs, uh, but ten at the 10 spot here in our power rankings just based on some of the other victories and some of the power of those victories for this week. And so one of those coaches is Coach Steven, who is sitting at our 9 spot. Um, no no way around this. We, we had a few whoopings this week. And uh, one of those was dished out by the Russellville Rockets and Coach Steven. Um, he just really had an answer for everything that Anthony wanted to bring. Uh, Mega Gallade is a absolute terror for Anthony's team to deal with. Uh, he doesn't have too many things that resist fighting, and the things that do resist fighting, Gallade gets coverage for. So things like Glissor and uh, things like... I guess that, that's, I mean, even the Incineroar, it can intimidate, but it's going to take a super effective Drain Punch or something like a close combat. Um, overall, the Rotom Heat and Megum Gallade in this matchup versus Anthony really are what kind of secured the victory for Steven. Uh, being able to pivot with Rotom Heat, being able to get Vaporeon in and Wish Pass if it needs to, uh, things like Regenerator Amoongus, and uh, no Sand, but Excadrill was still a huge threat to Anthony's team, something like a Sword Stance variant was going to be really hard to deal with. Things like a Scarf variant were going to be hard to deal with. So even though Excadrill didn't do too much in this matchup, it certainly put the pressure on the team build and forcing Anthony's hand for what he had to bring in this matchup. And I think that's what paved the way for Gallade to be as successful as it was, nabbing three kills. And so overall, very strong victory for Steven. He puts himself in a position where to get in the playoffs, um, he's going to have to finish ahead of Brandon. He's going to have to finish one victory better than Brandon. And that's his that's his way that he gets in playoffs. So it'll be interesting to watch those two battle it out for the rest of the season and see what happens there. So uh, that is number nine through number 16. We'll go ahead and jump into number one uh, through number eight. So at number eight, we've got the Arizona Volcarona and Mark sitting here at number eight. Uh, they were here last week. And even though they did take a, a pretty devastating victory to Coach Shea, they're still sitting here because if the season ends today, they're in playoffs. Yeah, he's got that former LDL championship in his his trophy case, and I think that is giving him a little bit more staying power in the power rankings than some of the other coaches have. Just the fact that he's been there, he's done it. Um, I think the Ditto is... The Ditto just kind of hard counters his entire team when you think about it. Uh, it's able to take advantage of things like Magic Bounce. It's able to take advantage of things like a Smurgle, uh, where you can lead Ditto, and if he leads Smurgle, you know exactly what the Smurgle tech is for the rest of the game. Um, 
Ditto can pretty much switch into Tapu Bulu and take any hit it wants to go for, barring any kind of cheeky hidden power poison or something like that. And uh, it can also copy stats from Halucha Gyarados. So I think the Ditto alone is what paved the victory for Shea and what gave Mark so much trouble. Um, but for Mark, uh, still having a strong season, he's at 5-5. Five and five. Really what the season will come down to is next week. Uh, versus number seven here, the Outback Komalas. Uh, both of those two coaches will face off against one another, and that head-to-head -head is so important in securing a playoff spot. So expect the winner of that game next week. Uh, I want to go ahead and set up some some uh, some big match drama here. Uh, expect the winner of that game to get a spot in playoffs, uh, barring any or just a c catastrophic finish to the season. Um, because whoever wins that game, their their records are both tied at this point. They will have the head-to-head -head advantage. <coughs> And with only five more games left in the season, it's going to be hard to beat um, the opponent's record by a full one game at this point, especially considering they have some tough battles up. Uh, Jesse falls down to the number seven spot, um, and this was this was a really tough battle for him. Uh, he did not have any any good answers for the Clefable, and it just kind of pummeled its way through the team, and that's ultimately what led him to a to a loss here the loss doesn't hurt too much because again it will come down to the uh, Volcarona vs Komala game this upcoming week to decide who should have the edge going in the playoffs um, but overall just uh, tough 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 loss here the, the Clefable is just such a good matchup versus Jesse's team without a poison type and nothing to really check it uh, outside of the Ferrothorn um, I do feel like he got off to a really good start in the game but again if, if as long as he he, he really needed crits uh, or some kind of a, a freeze to handle the Clefable and, and neither of those happened. So um, at the number six spot we've got Coach Anthony and the Victorville Victini. And even though he, he got swept uh, or not swept, but even though he got six owed by Steven, uh, he still got a very strong record on the season at six and four. Uh, so he's at the number six spot. He's had good victories. Uh, if the season ended today, he would be in the playoffs, and he would he does have a really good team. And so um, you see the bump up uh, one spot. Really, uh, the the logic behind that was the loss to Steven uh, wasn't as bad as a loss to Trig at this point in the, in the season. So that's why the victory. Bill Victini got a little bit of a bump up there. Um, I guess if for, for the Victorville Victini, the the thing that made it so difficult is uh, not having a really great check to the Mega Gallade. Um, you know, hindsight is 2020, but maybe something like a um, max defense Will O Wisp Mew would have been a, a decent answer. Um, something that could have taken on the uh, Gallade, maybe give it Darkinium Z to not take as much from a knockoff um, but overall Gallade, Gallade was such a problem um, packing things like knockoff coverage to deal with Jellicent uh, the fighting type stab is really strong um, other than Mimikyu which you don't want to swap in for uh, to lose the disguise potentially um, didn't have a, a really strong answer to the Cabalion which is why he uh, lost the lost this game 6-0 um, at the number five spot, we have Coach Matt and the Winnipeg Jellicent. Um, he is one of the other coaches that got a very strong 6-0 performance this week. And really, it was as soon as Como got a Dragon Dance, the team that Carlos brought just lost to Como. And Como got five kills in this game. So, um, for, for Matt, I just, I mean... Como, I, I, there's really not much else to say um, <laughs> to drag out the analysis of this game. Uh, Como O just kind of bodied uh, Carlos's team. It, it, it could one-shot the Salamence with a dragon move. It could knock out Zapdos if it was at low health. Uh, it can one-shot Houndoom, Miltank, and it just it just really put on immense amount of pressure. Carlos' only shot in this game was either bringing a Sashmon to deal with Como O or bringing something that had a um, super effective berry to deal with it which neither of those were brought and so as soon as Como got the dragon dance up uh, it was able to secure the victory for coach Matt and gave him a very strong 6-0 victory uh, versus a previously 8-1 coach in coach Carlos um, so big victory there for Matt uh, that's why he's standing strong at the number five spot and at number four we've got the Toronto Totodile and coach Ranward 
Um, very tough game versus Coach Brennan. Um, I think a uh, the, the crit on Laurentis was played a really big factor, but uh, Brennan had some outs uh, outside of that that he really could have played too. So, you know, who knows? It's Pokemon crits happen, especially when you've got something that has. Um, just it has to set up a ton and avoid crits so with a Lurantis it has to keep super powering and hope it doesn't get crit and uh, keep synthesizing and hope it doesn't get crit and as soon as it does get crit it's it's gonna fall so um, if he avoids that who knows what would have happened but overall very good game and uh, one of the best battles uh, of the week considering that we're, there were so many six hoes and just really strong wins uh, this was one of the few battles uh, that was pretty close and just had you sitting on the edge of your seat throughout the battle but um no doubt about it uh, coach ranward can bounce back and he's shown time after time he does uh have the ability to bounce back and finish strong and uh, definitely one of the best battlers in this league uh so at number three we've got his uh we've got the kryptonite uh the salt lake city swamperts or the salt lake city uh Kryptperts, uh no matter <laughs> what you want to say about that uh, i thought brennan had just fantastic prep in this game the Snorlax, the curse set, is something that he's he's got a little bit familiar with as the season has progressed. Luckily, he did not bring the curse set versus me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, as as uh, you'll watch this game, the paralysis on the Snorlax ended up helping Snorlax dramatically because it was packing facade and with facade and after a couple curses, it was able to break through the Porygon two uh, pretty easily. So. Um, this game really came down to what was going to happen with the, the Laurentis setup and what was going to happen as Snorlax was setting up. And fortunately for Brennan, um, he had every, he had things go his way to be able to pull out that victory and earn a very strong victory against the number four coach here. So two former champions battling it out. Always fun to see. And the Salt Lake City Swampert coming out on top. And... Uh, number two, we've got Coach Carlos. I won't uh, put salt in the wounds because <laughs> we've already talked about this with the J Winnipeg Jellicent. Uh, it happens. Sometimes you get 6 0 even though you uh, put in some really good prep. And uh, that's what happened this game. Just Como was able to set up and uh, drain punch its way to victory in this game. And uh, that's why he falls a spot, just because it was a, a, a 6 0 loss. So. Um, and then for myself, um, I was able to pull out a victory versus Chris, and um, really we I, I tie records with Carlos at this point and have a little bit different, better differential. Um, and so really, again, I think what you could say throughout this season, you can make a case for either one or two um, being at the top there. Um, but uh, I think uh, for, for for right now, I'll, I'll I'll take the number one spot. I'll take the the big target on my back uh, for the rest of the season. But uh, definitely a really strong week. A um, a lot of really good battles. A lot of really good just just um, thrashings, I guess you could say this week. And uh, things are starting to heat up as we've got five more weeks left before playoffs start. And so uh, without further ado, we'll go ahead and show you the battle of the week. Uh, that's gonna go to Thumb Brother Two and Coach Brennan. Um, the two Soul Link brothers, again, if you haven't checked out their Soul Link, please do. Uh, I think they're about six or seven episodes in. Uh, sorry if I got that number wrong. I haven't been able to keep up with it myself. Uh, but I have watched a few episodes. It's been pretty cool. Uh, so definitely go check that out. Uh, Thumb Brother 2 is going to take home the Battle of the Week this week. Uh, this, Based on the history of these two's rivalry, based on the fact that they're having really strong seasons and they're both really good draft players, um, that a lot of those things factored into making this the Battle of the Week in a week where there weren't a lot of really close battles, um, to be completely honest. But uh, that'll be our power rankings here uh, a little bit shorter than normal uh, so hopefully next week we can get somebody that's uh, able to join and uh, watch some battles and do a recap so uh, for some of the battles uh, just go ahead and you know talk about some of the really cool battles that are happening next week um, we've got uh, Brendan versus Brandon which should be a really good match we've got um, Antony versus Ranward, which should be a really good match. Two uh, trainers with uh, winning records. Um, really excited for my match for Steven. And then I think the match that everybody is looking forward to, um, the Jesse versus Mark match is going to 
really decided a lot about the playoffs in the Kanto region. So really excited for that. I hope you are too. Uh, this has been the Lazy Ghost giving you the LDL Season 7 Week 10 Power Rankings. Have a great night, everybody.